Hello there. I'm David A. Specht, and I want to be your coach. If there's anything that I have learned in my 30 plus years of leadership and coaching, I have learned that mindset is everything. Join me and my guests as we explore the positives and negatives of that thing between our ears. This is Keep This In Mind. Hello there. Welcome to Keep This In Mind, brought to you by SpectHealth.com. I am David A. Spect, and today I have an amazing guest on our show, James Newcomb, a fellow that I met through a podcasting I guess you would call it a podcasting community that I've been a member of since I think 2015. And we, we crossed paths through a through a, a random Facebook post and come to find out we had a lot of similarities in, in our life journey. He was he's former military, I'm former military. He started podcasting back in the you know, the early 20 teens. I started podcasting back in the early 20 teens. So we had like this very similar journey. But what what I love is that he has stayed the course. He has had multiple iterations of his show, but at, at the same time, he has shown a tremendous amount of consistency. And I believe that consistency will pay dividends over time. And so I just want to welcome to the show, James Newcomb. Welcome to the show, James. Good to have you. David, it is great to be with you. I appreciate the invite and this time to share with you. So I want to talk about, just to kind of kick things off, Tell me about your journey into podcasting, and then you know we're we're nine years removed from from when you you started, so that's a that that's quite the span. That that you know they talk about dog years. I think in podcasting years, that's that's like <laughs> yeah. a couple of lifetimes. Just kind of talk about what that journey felt like, and and what are some of the lessons you learned as you were going through that, you know, coming out of the military, getting, you know, what inspired you to start podcasting? And then what are some of the the ups and downs of, of your journey? I actually started as narrating audiobooks. I read a book that I really liked and I was wondering if this is available on audio. This is 2012 timeframe. And I just reached out to the author, found him somehow, probably a Google search or something. And I said, is there an audio version of your book? And he said, no, not at the moment. And I said, well, would you like one? And that's how I got into the business of using my voice as a profession. And fast forward a couple of years, I had listened to podcasts and I was, of course, aware of the medium and the technology. And then our mutual friend, John Lee Dumas, was a guest on a show that I listened to. Tom Woods is a person I've followed for years. And he, John was just a guest on Tom's show, and I heard about the success he was having financially and professionally and personally and otherwise. And I thought, you know, I've used my voice in the past. This, it seemed like a natural fit with that and my experience as a professional performer. At, at the time, I was in the U.S. Army playing trumpet, and it just seemed like something that I wanted to pursue. And that was 2015 that I got started. And like you said, there have been many different iterations of my public persona as a podcaster, but I'm still the same guy. I've learned some things about personal branding and, and whatnot, how to position myself as an authority, if you want to call it that, in the public space. But still the same guy. I just have a message and I have I try to just bring a very authentic way of delivering what I view to be the truth in this world. So that's about how I got started. Well, let, let's talk about journey then. You know, so many times you look at, you would consider the gurus out there and they typically show a journey that's like this straight line, right? Hey, if you if you follow my plan, you follow my thing, you're going to be doing what I do. And they don't ever mm -hmm. talk about that it is a grind, that it is, you know, a life of consistency, even when it doesn't feel like you're having traction. Talk about, you know, did you immediately become a success at podcasting or, or was it more of the, I've been grinding for a long time and, and, and I've had some ups and downs? Oh, it's been far from anything like that. And I think that the gurus who are really honest that are, have any credibility in the, in the marketplace and they last longer than 90 days with their 90 day claim to fame on Instagram, the really ones that are really honest They'll tell you it's like that, that crazy squiggly line that you always see on, on social media posts. This is what success really looks like. <clears throat> and that's definitely my journey, not just in podcasting, but in everything that I've done. 
And so we'll probably talk about this in a couple of minutes, but I just started a brand new show this year in January of 2023 called This Is What We Crave. And uh, happy to share the the background of how I came with that name. Yeah, let's but this, break that down. Sure. Yeah. I started as a podcaster. I was focused on music because I was a musician. And I had a show that the idea was to help musicians make, it's kind of like Entrepreneur on Fire for musicians. Not It's not like I mimicked John's show, but I sort of modeled it after John's mm-hmm. business have a podcast that talks about musicians making money and making their living with their music. And then out of that would grow um, courses or offerings that, that can monetize the podcast more or less, maybe, maybe sponsorships eventually. But the more I did it, the more I realized there's just, there's more to James Newcomb than just talking about music and talking about business and how the two intersect. It's a great topic. It's a wonderful topic, but there's just more to me than that. And I realized there's, I just want to talk about more things with my show. I want to be known as more than just a musician Mm -hmm. because there's, there's, there's a lot to me more than that. And the, this is what we crave show is, is based on five core principles that I use in my business and how I really, how I make any decisions in my life, personal or business. And that is community, respect, adventure, Voshtan and energy. Voshtan is a Persian word that I think translated in English would mean like integrity, conscientiousness, mm-hmm. just conscientious approach. Like my wife is Persian. And so it, it took a lot of thought, but it, I came, ac- came across it very honestly. And I just love how things work out like that, where you're able to have something, uh, principles that are very meaningful to me personally, but they work out into an acronym. I, as an <laughs> artist, I love, I love how those things work out. And, it, yes. it was, and it's not gimmicky may appear gimmicky from the outset, but I did come across it very honestly. And just a lot of thought, a lot of introspection went into the name of the show. So it's just, uh, it's exactly how I want to be known in the world and how the message that I want to share with others. I want to kind of dive into something that you, you brought up just a couple minutes ago. And that was, you said, there's more to James than just music, just being right. an artist in that realm. And I think for people that, that watch and listen to this show and a broader audience too, they start life in one lane, but realize that there's a lot more depth to them than just that one lane. And maybe they feel trapped in the one lane because they have now, it's like being a typecast actor, you know, Leonard Nimoy could not be anything but Spock in the eyes of anybody, right? Because because that's how they, the world sees them. And, and yet he's, you know, he was much more of a broader talent than that. Talk about that. Was it difficult to have the market or your circle accept you for more than just being a musical artist as you started, you know, taking your podcast into a different direction? I I think I just wanted, I didn't want to be just known as a trumpet player. If I'm going to have a public persona, then I don't want that to be how I'm known by, by the public, if that makes any sense. And when I was getting out of the military in 2015, I was thinking, what is my life going to look like? And my options were I could go get a job. There's always usajobs.gov or whatever it is. Work for the government in some meaningless, soul-sucking job <laughs> that, that uh, doesn't add any value to, to anything. Or I could do what's called gigging and teaching as like a freelance teacher and performer in whatever town we choose to live in. And I didn't want that. I don't want that to be my life. I wanted, I just wanted more than that. And that's why I got into podcasting. But interestingly, I'm getting into the scene here in Virginia beach, gigging and teaching. <laughs> so, but, but, but that's not what I pursued from the outset. Right. Now that I have established myself in the podcasting space, now I feel at liberty to, to pursue those things, which I enjoy a lot, right. but I didn't want to pigeon my hole myself into that. And, and I feel like that's where a lot of people find themselves is that they're pigeonholed into their current, I would say, occupation, the thing that occupies yes. their time. It's, it's not necessarily their vocation, the thing that they, they feel like they were born or meant to do, but it's this occupation that I had to go to work or I had to do this one thing to make ends meet. And now I can't break out of that um, idea. But I also believe that everything starts between the ears, right? You, what you can see behind your eyes, you can, you can you know, work towards manifesting in your life. 
Tell me about in your personal journey, even maybe pre leaving the, the military or, or post, you've had some some major events happen in your life, you know, and, and how did those shape the is this all or maybe the what's next questions in, in your life? How did life itself bring you to a place where you're like, I am not going to be stuck as just this one type of individual? Well, it's a very broad question, so I'll do my best to stick with generalities because I don't really have the time to go in depth on answering that question in full. But I will say that ever since I've been a young person living with my parents growing up, I think I've always had a bit of an unconventional kind of an outside the box way of making decisions, like just just the leaving home and going into the military. When I was 18 years old, that was not, not a lot of people have that kind of courage when they're 17 years old. I didn't think anything of it. It was just like, I'm done with high school. This is what's next. And that's always been my approach, going to a Bible college in early, late 90s. You know, that's just something, that's a decision that I made. My parents probably thought I was had lost my mind, but but I've always done what I believe is the right thing. And not not necessarily morally or legally, but what's right for me, based on my own values. And people will say what they say. They'll make whatever dis- judgments that they make about my decisions. But at the end of the day, it's my decision. It's my life. And I think I've always had an awareness of that, and that's just grown more more potent over time. Just I think just an awareness of this is my life, and a, maybe a personal agency, I could say. Um, I don't. I don't know if that answers your questions, but I think it does from a, from a standpoint of this because this is what I, I pull out of it. You have, for whatever reason, <clears throat> found the ability to ask yourself what's next and be able to step into that. I would say, you know, and of course, our our relationship is very surface at the moment because yes. you know, we, we've just met, but. I would say that in your circle, you end up giving advice to people who want to know how to do that. How how do you, for lack of a better term, kick fear in the face, get out of your own way and and, and step into what's next? So if somebody were to come to you and say, James, man, I see what you've done. I mean, you you inspire me. You're you're the guy that's not afraid to take a chance and do something different or pivot when everybody else isn't pivoting. How How can I do what you do? How do I get myself in a position, you know, what's that process look like? I think it just comes from a place of your, you know, who you are, you know, what you believe, what you stand for. And there is definitely a measure of personal courage that is required to make a decision. Another major event, life event for me was moving to Vietnam in 2019. I spent between 2019 and 2022, I spent half the time here in Virginia, and the other half was in Vietnam, uh, marrying my my wife. And uh, I, th- I think at that point, my parents were like, "Eh, this is what James does." So they, they probably <laughs> didn't they didn't they didn't think anything of it. Based versus 25 years ago, when I had made some decisions that raised some eyebrows, but um, but when I met Sana for the first time. It's just like, it's just instantly, I knew Mm. this person is worth pursuing. And if you make an effort to get her in your life, she'll make your life better. And I just call it instinct, call it your gut, but I just knew. And I was right. Things worked out. It took quite a while for the visa process to work out longer than we expected, but um, we got through it. And now she's here in the U.S. and we're we're going through... going through stuff, major adjustments for both of us, but we're getting through it. So There's, I think I think what I would say to that person is just, if you know who you are and you know what you believe, what you stand for, you're not going to be wrong if you use that as your guide for your decisions. So I want I want to kind of dive a little bit more into it, not, not deeper per se, but I like how you said your parents 25 years into, into James's decision-making process weren't all that surprised when you decided that, that you're going to spend a, a considerable amount of time in Vietnam. To me, that that speaks to the idea of working the muscle, right? You you set a pattern of consistent action to where now it's not a surprise to anybody, especially yourself. So 
as we kind of you know start to put a bow on 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 this, I do want to talk to you about you have a heart to help people. I have seen it in in what you do, whether whether it's helping, like you said, artists make make you know being able to monetize their craft to to now I see that you're you're assisting people starting their own podcast because you do have this longevity in in the in the business. What are some of the things that you really enjoy? helping other people accomplish in their own lives? What, what are the things that you're like, this is what I was put here to do? I think I would say when I see someone going through the same struggles that I did at one point, whether it's teaching a, a young trumpet player or uh, helping, helping someone start a brand new podcast, that just brings so much joy to me. When they have these same questions that I asked myself years ago. And for me, it's like, this is exactly what you should do. I know. And, you know, I, I try to give my, my, the best advice that I can <clears throat> when it's solicited, sometimes when it's not. <laughs> but uh, to, to see people have those aha moments when they're going through the same mental struggle and sometimes the mental anguish that I went through, <clears throat> have gone through over the years. I don't know. It's just something really magical about that helping people get over that hump. And it's not, for me, success isn't tied to numbers. It's not tied to download numbers or an amount of money. Success is when you have the courage to just get up, press record on that that audio software and say what you know to be true. And then you hit publish. It's uh, It takes a lot of courage. And if I can be a part of someone taking that leap of faith and kicking those fears in the face, like you said, that's, it's just, I, I don't know how to put it into words. It's just a very, very rewarding feeling. So let's, let's invite the audience then. If people want to contact you and want to follow you and, you know, what, what is it you can offer to them as far as, you know, guidance or, or, or whatever, how can people reach you? What, what should people do if they, if they want to say, James, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in, in following in your footsteps. I would have people go to my website, jamesdnewcomb.com. And I have a, like I mentioned before, I've done audiobooks in the past and I've recorded some books that are in the public domain. And I have some offerings that are just totally free Success and Failure, The Go Getter, Obvious Adams, and As a Man Thinketh by James Allen, which is a great book. Mm. Those are all free. All you have to do is just uh, subscribe to my email list and then. You'll be directed to the page where you can just access them, download them onto your hard drive, do whatever you want with them. Um, and then if you choose to remain on my email subscription, you'll get to know me over time. And if you want to um, take me up on some of the offers that I have with for coaching or podcast production or podcast coaching, getting into the business, then we can talk about that later. But I think I would just, I think I would just want people to Go to the website, listen to the audiobooks, read some of the emails, and go from there. Fantastic. James, thank you so much for being on the show today. It's been a great conversation. I've learned a lot as a, as a result of, of the answers to the questions, and I look forward to, to seeing where all this goes, both with my audience and with me personally. I think we've, we, we've, cre- we've kindled a new relationship here between the two of us. So, guys, I just want to tell you all to follow, like, subscribe. And we'll put all the links in the show notes. But again, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, James, for being the guest. And remember, applied knowledge is power. God bless. That is going to do it for this episode of Keep This In Mind. For more, visit davidaspect.com. Like, follow, and subscribe. Thank you for listening. And remember, applied knowledge is power. God bless. God bless.